morning viewers and students. Welcome to Mount Kenya University Lectures. I want us to see a unit called Rights of Children and Protection, BC 2203. As a facilitator, I'm Kamau Bonfas. I want us to move together and we see the reason as to why we should usher our children to some assertive level of living because they are our children of our window of hope. I'll start with the definition of terms that pertains to the unit and we are having the child. In our context, we are having the definition of the term child as defined by our law of Kenya, the Constitution of Kenya 2010, whereby we have it that any human being below the age of 18 is who is a child. This according to the Kenyan context. In the various countries of the world, you realize they have various definitions of their children. I guess the Sharia rule will always have it as 15 years. And so every country you are concerned with, you are working in, you are researching on, we'll always have different contexts of the definition of the child. I should also mention it here, that in our African context, a child is anyone whose parent is alive, meaning even at my age, I'm still a child to my parent who's alive. Meaning, when it comes to the rights, we mean entitlements that must be accorded to children, irrespective of circumstances. What is this that we are calling entitlements? It is a must to feed the child. It is a must to clothe the child. It is a must to shelter the child. So whether there is famine, whether there is war, whatever circumstance that surrounds the child must be catered for. So when we mean rights, we are just saying, irrespective of how the situation is, a child must be accorded the same. What is it that I mean by protection? This is preventing and responding to the child's needs. What are these needs? There are some children who are in violence. Others are prone to exploitation. Others are vulnerable to abuse. These are our children. We shall have a lot of time to look at how violence is castigated, exploitation, abuse. And you're going to bear me witness that there are many things that happen to our children of which are not called before. Let's see. Remember, protection of children is our collective responsibility. When I talk of children's rights, am I repeating myself? No. Children's rights are rights for human beings. In this case, they are rights that are for human beings, in this case, accorded to the children. Do you know your rights as an adult? Well, the way you have your rights, even these children have their rights very well stipulated, very well coded. We shall see the instruments that are meant for that. And we are going to see how they have been codified, how they have been written down, how they have been spelled out. Look at what we are calling a want. I'm blending it on whatever I'm, called, I'm calling rights. So that I may demystify why we may not be so much demanding. A want is a strong desire. A need is a basic want. I want to match the two. What is it that is a want to the child? It's a luxury they can do without. What is it that is a need to a child? 
It is a basic want. Basic meaning essential. They can't do without them. So, as we get deep into our lesson, we shall have a list of these items that we use in life. And maybe you'll tell me which one is a want, which one is a need. And this when time allows. Because when I was growing up, a shoe was a want. That's during my time. What about today? And again, what environment is this that would demand that a shoe has to come in as an essential commodity? Mm -hmm. So, I just want to make it clear that at times we may kind of claim whatever is a need is a want and this would lead us to denying the children whatever they need desperately. At times we may talk of needs when whereas those things are wants. Mm -hmm. Are we doing them any justice? Well, let's see. As I'm discussing freedoms that should be according to children, rights that have been spelled out for children, there are some of us who feel maybe it's right to do that, it's good to do that, not good to do that. Uh, who is right, who is wrong? If I were to ask you, should we have a list of demands that you are calling children's rights? Or should we just leave it to adults, because they are human beings, in my culture, we say even a hyena has never eaten its young one. Meaning, do we trust every adult to accord these children whatever it is that they need? Whichever side of the divide you belong to, let us first see who are these people who would feel that it is good we have children's rights listed somewhere, spelled very, very clearly. Number one, and I agree with them. Don't know whether you're going to agree with them. They say children are so weak and incapable to choose what fits them most. Mm -hmm. Is it true? To me, it's very true. We have some family cultures whereby children are just there to be seen, not to be heard. Meaning, whatever has to be said by the parent, it is what has to happen call it draconian rule, to these parents or to these adults, the much they know is that maybe, according to their background, the way they were brought up, it is the way the children should be treated. But I thank God, we're in another era. They still say, children are human beings. It's only that they are miniatures. If you have your rights as a human being, why wouldn't they have rights and they are human beings. At some point, we may borrow from the child development. And we can see, even at age five years, 90% of the brain development of the child is already registered and realized. Meaning, whatever is now coming this later is just the experiences we are exposing them to. But the capacity the brain has to hold, it is just adequate. It's just adequate. Number three, they say the rights we are having should be there because they draw attention to the children. Because not unless it is listed, in as much as we may, as we may expect it to be automatic to the adults, well and good, it may not work. But when we say a child should be accorded education, so even whoever thinks that kind of taking a girl to school is kind of preparing a wife to another person who will be learned and maybe these are family resources that will be transferred to another home, this person is going to be focused on what should happen. Taking this girl to the school. When we say a child has a right to play, when I was growing up, this is what I used to hear from the parents. 
kazi yenu ni kukula tu huku na kucheza mhm by the way according to frobel heydrich play is work for children even the work should be given to children it is playing if any gift should be given to your children it is playing materials if any occupation should be given to the children it is just the aspect of being in playful mood and that is how they develop so when it is listed there somebody knows our they are kind of the attention is kind of drawn and it's like hi hey, yeah you mean play is something that should be accorded to children yes and a big yes fourthly they say all adults all children moral obligations if you are confident that you can accord these children whatever it is that they need why are you so offended when it is a, a list of it that is kind of given to say these are the interests that should be according to the children what side of the divide do you belong to are you opposed to the list are you are you for the list are you convinced with the four reasons that are given by those of us who feel there should be a list spelling clearly the children's rights nevertheless we must accommodate every opinion every thinking every idea and we come to this other part of the divide whereby they think you are coming too much on talking of according children their rights too much mm -hmm. why number one, they say this list is too long well a long yes but again as long as it is is it serving the purpose you'll tell me so when we shall get to the instruments that have the rights of children listed you shall tell me this one has 40 rights this one has 50 rights but all of them you realize they have a list that even overlap there are some rights in this other rights are in this other rights are in this but all of them you realize there is a common denominator they are going to have that they're going to have the majority of those rights similar to all of them why we are catering for this child from the global level we are catering for this child at the regional level that's the continental level we are catering for this child at the national level and even at the national level we have come saving a precise document that is squarely addressing the rights of these children should i mention at this point that whoever you call adults are only 14 percent in our country kenya should i say 86 percent are whom you're calling youths and if i'll get to the bar of 35 years the lower i'll come you'll agree with me that's that's where the majority will be so once and again when i say these children are a window of hope i exactly mean that if we tend to these ones they are going to come up as a very good garden whereby we can trust them for a conducive and habitable environment in our land kenya teachers <laughs> i should remark here and say it is from you that we are to get a meaningful nation otherwise we have a country but a meaningful nation is going to come from you look at what we are saying somebody has a thought that age 18 years which you are using as a demarcation of who is a child and who is an adult has no basis of you saying this is the very cut line which we should foster mm -hmm. well 
Remember in this case, we are not saying the proponents are the right people. The opponents are the right people. You also bear with me that even in uh, matter two, you may realize there is a commotion. A parent is here. The conductor is here. The conductor is asking for some fare for a child who is just seated next to a parent. Just to realize the parent is angrily arguing. There's a child. How do you charge him or her? But even in your case, when you look at the child being pointed at, you can tell, I, because the child is even bigger than the parent. But again, why age 18? Should we adopt it or not? But for the interest of our land, for the interest of our people who are children, we must stand at some cut point so that we may tell this is where at least we can shift our attention to. So, I still back the law of Kenya at having it at age 18. How do you think? Look at the third opposition point. Some people feel there is a misunderstanding of who is a child. Why is it that we are giving him a lot of independence? Mm -hmm. as, an, as an adult, I am the one who should be independent to accord these children whatever it is of their interest. Uh-huh, well, yes. But again, you would attribute that to common sense. My question is, is common sense common to all? As you tell me yes or no, the aspect is, whatever misunderstanding is coming in, whoever has the understanding, we heal them. But there are some people who have no much sense of who is this, or how they should come up, because most of us, you bear me witness, they are borrowing from wherever we were brought up. There we are. Opposers and proposers. Where do you belong? I want us to cast our interest here. When you are saying nurturing our children is nurturing our window of hope. If you look at the word nurturing, you as a teacher... There is something deposited in that child. And we are talking of deposited in that child. It is deposited in eight dimensions. The child you are dealing with as a teacher has eight dimensions. Eight, all of them, that make a whole one individual. There is that physical dimension. There is that mental dimension. There is that emotional dimension. There is that social dimension. There is that moral dimension. That spiritual dimension. Run all down to aesthetic dimension. As a teacher, the term nurturing is coming in because you are attending to something so that it may come out per perfectly. And when it comes out perfectly, this is somebody who is going to be productive. You are the one who is concerned with growing and developing of this child holistically. So when you look at the physical, when you are according them the chance to play, as they are stretching their body parts, they are elongating and the sizes are increasing because the more they stretch, the more the body parts strengthen. And mark me. The eye-hand coordination, I like calling it eye-brain-hand coordination, develops at that point. When you're talking to the moral, as they are playing there, they have the aspect of what is this that is good? What is this that is bad? I don't have a lot of time to kind of clarify every one of these, how it comes working. But mark me, as they are getting to sort out which one is good, which one is bad to their colleagues, it is the same time that they are connecting it. How do they relate to their supernatural? And that is where they are developing their spiritual dimension. 
Because if I offend my neighbor, then I offend my God. I may not talk of God. I'm handling you from various contexts of whoever you call God. Call him Allah, call him Buddha, call him God, call him whoever. The issue is supernatural. So when this kid moves from down there, knowing that it is human to do this to my neighbor, it is inhuman to do this to my neighbor, that is all what is our interest as teachers. Look at their mental development, their wisdom. Their wisdom has to do a lot with whatever knowledge you put to them. How much do they use it? How well do they use it? How well are they effective in utilizing the same? So, even if I may not go down to the emotional, how they kind of come, shaping and reorganizing, streamlining and aligning their feelings and their tensions, the issue is you as a teacher, if you are a nurturer, then you are a mentor. Your experiences, you are exposing them to the children. They get to learn from you. How should I behave? How should I do this? How should I feel about this? And when you are right on anything, the issue is one day you are going to be proud of a holistic person. Look at the aspect of social development. You take through this kid, your teachings, you are fostering four things. Don't forget, as a teacher, one is knowledge, two are skills, three are values, four are attitudes. So anytime you are teaching, you are doing those four things. You are instilling those four aspects in this kid. Let, me, let them be very smart, cognitively. They get A's. Let them be very skillful. This is what they can do by their hands. Let them even know how to value whatever it is that they have got from you in terms of intellectual, in terms of psychomotor, whatever they can do. The issue is they are going to form attitude along that line. Meaning what? Some of these children are in their formative stage. Age three, you are still having them in school. Age four, five, six, seven, eight, you call them early childhood or early years. Nine, ten, run up to fifteen, you are having them in class eight. So, I want you to visualize yourself whereby you are from the formative stage with this kid. Whatever they formed, you realize it sticks to them, especially in those first eight years. Meaning, if you open up, if you expose them to what should make them assertive, if you expose them to what will lead them to say yes to this, which is right, not to this, which is wrong. That is an assertive child. We are saying this is where you are going to have somebody who have an absolute principle in life. Somebody who says, no, irrespective of whether you are doing it, all of you. Somebody who can say yes, irrespective of whether you are all for no. So, who is this nurturer? Who is this person whom we are saying they are modeling? Remember, a quote is cut according to the owner's size. Modeling, meaning, he as a teacher, you are to lead from in front. How are you interacting them? How are you socializing them? How are you directing them? However it is that you are doing, and it is acting to their best development in the eight dimensions, 
then as a teacher what we are saying is you are just nurturing our window of hope remember we have spent our times on who are opposers and who are proposers of whether these children should have their rights having our minds in this then you can say when we are having those rights codified rights listed then we are doing attention of our people our caregivers i would call them so meaning what you as a teacher you're a caregiver the parent there at home is a caregiver house helps are there are caregivers doctors nurses and those medics are caregivers it comes a time when we see police people being caregivers social workers are there caregivers there are those of you who are working with the children from wherever you are working with these children. These are an integral part of our community and our society. So the minute you nurture them well, it means you have mentored them well. When you give us a well-nurtured person, then you have given us a good prospect of our hope in our land. And there's a time when you realize social injustices are very minimal and possibly not at all fair. There's a time when you realize whatever it is that you call vices, instead of raising eyebrows of whatever has happened from one corner of the, uh, of the world or the country or elsewhere, you realize mm -mm, those are things of the past. But the back stops at you as a teacher. We shall see our second lesson still in this series because our mandate here is just inevitable. Let's have a break. We meet in the next lesson and we see the match that you're obliged to do. These televised lectures supplement our robust online learning going on on our MKU online platform. You can view more on our televised lectures via our online platform. We are in a digital era and Mount Kenya University knows this. The following are the steps to follow so as to complete your online application. Download the application form from the website www.mku.ac.ke Attach copies of your academic certificates and ID. Pay the application fees via M-Pesa pay bill number 270988. Your ID is the account number. 2,000 shillings is the charge for a postgraduate. You can also deposit in the bank accounts provided on the website. Then email all the above to apply at mku.ac.ke.